Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. I made a video about choosing your racket where I went in all over the place about rackets and gave some tips from my experience testing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rackets and strings and shoes over the years. This video I want to go more into different brands and the different feeling you can expect from a different brand. It's not exact science, it's based on my experience, but I hope you get something useful from it. If you do, please subscribe and uh, tell your friends about Tennis Nerd. I have, you know, loads and loads of rackets on the floor here and I'm gonna just take one each. There is no specific order in this video. I will just, you know, take it as we go and talk about the brand and the rackets. Well, we start with one I close here. Technofiber, this is a TF40, the first generation TF40. Great racket, this one, uh, similar to a Blade or Radical. Uh, very, very control oriented. This was 1820. They now also released 1619, a bit more open pattern. And what's really been improving with Technofiber rackets, besides the cosmetic, it looks even better the next generation of the TF40s, is I think that um, the feeling and, and uh, you know, you, Technofiber rackets used to be a little bit stiffer, I would say, uh, when, back when that was popular. And now with the foam filling, uh, and they seem to have found like a, a you know, not too muted approach but the, the foam does dampen the, the racket a bit and make it more solid. So it's a solid and dampened feel in Technofiber rackets uh, that I think many like, and that's a reason why they're becoming more and more popular. They have the T-Fight, which is a little bit more like a pro staff style model, a bit more uh, for attacking players, quite a difficult racket to use, the T-Fight. T-40 lands more in the middle, more like a blade, I would say, if you know what a, a blade gives you, what's more versatile racket. And then they have the TFX1, which is a more of a power uh, racket. Uh, Daniil Medvedev uses an older T-Fight model, uh, but now you have players like Quarantine Mota, for example, who switch to the TFX1. So Technofiber, they are gaining some, some market share. And on the women's side, they have Iga Svantec using her own signature model. One thing to note about Technofiber rackets is that they don't have a trapdoor here. So if you like customizing rackets, adding some weight in the, in the handle, uh, it's not that easy with Technofiber rackets. And the grip shape, it's very rectangular. So uh, this is an old kind of head shape, uh, TK76 palette shape, if you know what I'm talking about there. So that's not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, it's just good to point out. Some people love it. And uh, it's something I've struggled with a little bit myself, the, the shape of the racket. Quick sponsor break. Check out the singles playbook from Fuzzy Yellow Balls. They will teach you patterns, how to beat certain types of players with different strategies and patterns of play. It's full with videos, lots of different chapters on beating pushers, counter punchers, serving volleyers and so on. I found this product great. I bought it over a year before they asked to sponsor some YouTube videos for me. So uh, check it out. The link is in the description. Some brands have gone extinct or are not really there anymore. Here is one of them. Fisher and uh, they used to create beautiful rackets. This is the Michael Stich Vacuum Pro 90, uh, which was a legendary frame. Beautiful sensation when you hit the ball here. But Fisher molds were bought by a company called Pacific uh, that still makes some excellent rackets. Uh, so I can recommend you checking out Pacific if you want something a little bit different, something a bit unique. They're not an older retailer uh, sites, but you can buy them through their own website. Uh, Marcus Bagdatis used to uh, use Pacific rackets based on the Fisher mold and uh, endorse them. But they haven't really pushed on any other pros that I've seen in recent years. But if you're a uh, kind of old school racket guy, I think you know and, and enjoy the Fisher rackets because they used to have a very nice feel. And this racket constructed with fiberglass, which is something I like, especially uh, because it creates a softer, very, very nice sensation. But they break a bit easier. Going with other smaller-ish brands, uh, Fulke, also a legendary brand. Uh, they have the C10 Pro, uh, which is kind of an icon uh, in the game. Uh, they are not seen as much on tour these days, but they have some doubles players that, that use Fulke rackets. If you're curious about their brand, you can check out the podcast I did with Nick Mitchell, their American marketing manager. This was the C10 Evo, and that's kind of the evolution, evolution of their legendary model. It's a little bit lighter and vocal rackets uh, still pack a very nice feel. And like the Fisher one I showed, they're a little bit more narrow. So it's a tougher sweet spot, but when you hit it, it's, it's very nice. So it's also a brand you might not think about that much, but it's also worth uh, mentioning. And uh, historically they've had a really like kind of buttery, nice plush sensation. Now they're a little bit more modern, a little bit firmer. Uh, I think that's what most brands have gone for because people need more power, but they still make nice rackets. 
From small to big, Wilson, one of the icons in the game here with their new racket line. This is the prototype cosmetic, they call it. Wilson, obviously, they've been around for, for ages. They have their blade, which is a more the versatile frame. And they have the pro staff, which is all about precision. You know, Roger, it's a tougher line to use generally. And then now they have the shift, which is a little bit, little bit more spin focused, modern. They have the clash, which is come more comfortable. And the ultra for power. And the burn, which is very similar to the ultra, but bit more spin focused. So they have a bunch of different rackets, Wilson. Stiffer, but they're more focused on, I would say, um, control maybe than a racket brand like Babula, which is more about spin and power. Prince, what happened to Prince? Uh, many ask, uh, they're still around. They're still producing rackets. They're still producing very good rackets. I have done multiple podcasts with my buddy, Tim Parak, who is uh, the main racket designer at Prince. Uh, and he is a very smart guy, great racket designer. Uh, this one is a good one, for example. This is not belonging to me, but Dragos Madras, a pro player. Uh, I arranged this for him, but I haven't been able to give it to him yet. Uh, but this is an, an, a good example of, of an excellent racket. It's the, the Beast 98 O port. So they were famous that they had these holes that create a lot of string movement, take some of the strain uh, from the shock of the ball away from the arm. So pretty good for the elbow, but also have quite a unique feel. And some pros really love that Prince feel. They have the Tour Series, which is great for a mix of power, spin and versatility. They have the Phantom, which is all about comfort and control. Also excellent rackets and a little bit crazier rackets like the Ripstick, for example, which huge O ports, lots of power and spin. So Prince are still a great brand. They've struggled with their company setup and finances over the years. And that's why they've gone up and down and up and down. Uh, they don't have many indoors players. They used to have Iga and then they still have John Isner, but uh, it, it's been a rough, uh, rough maybe decade for, for Prince or so. Still around, still great, great, great products. Dunlop, also a brand with a long heritage in the game. And I think they really got like a revamp of their whole in, in range when they were bought by Srixon. Since they did that, their rackets, I think, became much better. Uh, with the technology, you know, Infinity by BSF, actually these kind of Technologies have made something work for Dunlop. They used to have create great products. I mean, Paul Angel now has his own brand, but he used to be a, a, a racket designer there. But then they had a few years and they just struggled a little bit to create good, good rackets. They had some weird ideas. Uh, but now they're back in action and they have the, the power racket, the, which is great. The FX500, a little bit stiffer. But they also have the control rackets, which is the CX. Uh, they're all excellent, I think and the spin rackets sx firmer feel more direct feel and not so dampened it's not like technofiber where you feel the foam around uh, this is a little bit more more direct in sensation bubble lot ish but but not all the way there and uh, very good should be considered i think the price point generally is a little bit lower on dunlop rackets than, than many of the other bigger brands so also worth checking out for you arm strugglers out there if you have tennis elbow you might have heard of this brand uh, pro kenex they um, have the sound of a maracas inside the racket because they have something called kinetic energy, um, kinetic tech, which are chambers inside the racket here where the, there's micro beads, they move towards the impact zone of the ball and they actually absorb the shock. And that's why it's an excellent brand for players who are concerned about comfort, tennis elbow and so on. Uh, this is their Q5. Pro Plus. The names are very confusing for Pro Kenex. I think they could improve that. Uh, but they have a great the rackets. I would say for like the average player, the KI5, which is a racket I tried recently, is great. So check out the KI5 if you are concerned with tennis elbow, but you want some power and uh, some spin. The thing about these is obviously that the sensation when you hit the ball is going to be dampened. It's not the racket maybe where you have the closest connection to the tennis ball because it's it's so well dampened thanks to the technology, uh, but, but otherwise they, they're great. And they have um, tend to have a bit higher swing weight. So the, the weight when you swing the racket, so more mass towards the head with this technology. So if you want a really whippy racket, go for the lower weight rackets of the Pro Canics. Fun fact, Pro Canics actually developed their Destiny mold that Babylon bought for the Pure Drive. So um, they are or have been in the game for a long time and they've, they've made some cool innovations over the years. One of the brands you see the most these days, Yonex, made in Japan, great quality control. Although the swing weight seems to have gone down a little bit over the last the batches of rackets I've tried, but just uh, beautiful rackets. You know, the quality is, is, is very, very good. And uh, they also play nicely. And what's good with Yonex is that they, for every generation of rackets, they really try to change it up, sometimes too much. 
in my case, I think the V-Core maybe was a bit too far. Nice and soft, but a little bit too lively for my taste. But I think many players will also enjoy them. Uh, so the V-Core uh, 98 is the one I have here. That's the spin line, the V-Core. Uh, and I would say Yonex rackets are powerful, spin-oriented. But thanks to their technology with the VDM tech, they are quite muted and dampened. So if you are a guy who wants to feel the ball 100%, maybe not Yonex. But thanks to their isometric head shape, you have more forgiveness. So uh, a 98 feels a bit like a 100 and a 95 they have feels a bit like a 98. So I think definitely they are quite forgiving, easy to use racket. There's lots to like about Yonex rackets. Eson for power, V-Core for uh, spin and they have a V-Core Pro for control. That might change in the future because it's not so logical to have V-Core and V-Core Pro, I would say. So Linko also makes rackets. Um, they're more famous for strings like Hyper-G, Turbite, and so on. But uh, this one is good. It's the White Out 1820. Uh, they have a Blackout, which is a 100 square inch racket, a bit more power and spin. This one is more like a TF40 blade, Radical, uh, these types of rackets, more controlled. Uh, and um, very nice uh, sensation. They were developed together with Roman Prox, a racket wizard in from New York uh, that I've interviewed on tennisnerd.net, so check that out. They also come filled with foam, which is why I liken them the most to Technifiber rackets. Very solid, soft feel that many people like. A little bit dampened, which comes with the foam feeling, but overall uh, excellent frames uh, that can be liked by many, especially the white out. They're supposed 1619 for more spin and then 1820 for a bit more through the court control. Babola, have you heard of this brand? Yeah, they're pretty much everywhere, right? So uh, here we have the Pure Arrow, which is the spin line. I think maybe the most sold rackets in the marketplace. I'm not sure if that's changing nowadays, but it's been everywhere. Uh, they were so good at kind of going out to colleges back in the day and, and making sure their rackets were in the hands of many good junior players. They had huge ambassadors from the beginning, like Carlos Moya with the Pure Drive, then uh, Rafa Nadal, obviously, with the Arrow and they had Dominic team uh, when they launched the Pure Strike. The Arrow, I think, is the most popular one, which is the spinny one. And then you have the Drive, the Pure Drive, which you see everywhere as well, which is more about power through the court. And you have their Pure Strike, which is due an update. I think it's been wait it's been a while since we, we saw that. Uh, the main ambassador is Dominic team. So I think uh, it's been a little bit of an issue with also his injuries and career uh, problems. Uh, they have a very, um, I would say, firm, stiff, crisp, whatever you want to call it, feel. They create a, usually a lot of spin and power. Sometimes they've had a tendency to, um, to create issues for players who are using them because they are very stiff rackets. So you need to dial in the string choice. And when players want to copy Rafa, for example, they use RPM Blast, which is a stiff string, great polyester string, but a stiff string at a high tension, which Rafa uses as well, 56 pounds. But most people are not Rafa, so that's why you see tennis elbow. And to control the power, I've seen players with a pure drive and they string, you know, 60 pounds with a polyester string so uh, they are firmer rackets a bit stiffer uh, but if you dial in the string tension if you don't have issues with your arm they are excellent rackets of course head rackets i talked a lot about head rackets in my recent video about choosing a racket and uh, they're you know also an icon in the business i think head rackets are more about precision and feel generally not so much about power although they obviously try to have everything they have the most racket models which is confusing maybe too much in my opinion and uh, they've also gone a little bit stiffer they had some dark years in my uh, racket nerding opinion when they went to the graphene then the older rackets became stiffer and more powerful uh, but now with Wuxetic I think they found home again and the, the rackets are much better generally historically a, a field based racket and if you're curious about head I've been to their factory in Kennelbach twice now actually to, to see it. I would love to get invites to other uh, racket companies, factories as well and headquarters, but so far nothing. <laughs> so if you're a racket company watching this, please, uh, I, I would happily come to your place. Actually, I was invited to Artengo, so they should give a, give a shout out, but I sent Nikki because I couldn't go. Uh, but Artengo is a brand you should check out as well. They are a lower cost brand. They create great products actually for the cost. So uh, definitely one of those players. But had an icon in the game, field control from the Pro Tour 630, which is the 2.0, to you know modern times with the Gravity Pro and, and so on. But more about head rackets in that video, choosing a, a racket. Back to smaller brands again, uh, Hazel, a racket brand I recently reviewed, a small operation from Australia. They have two models basically. The one is kind of like a, the blade, and it's a, the Hazel 98, 
more of a blade style, control oriented, uh, more difficult to use frame. And then they have this one, which is kind of a bit of a wider head shape uh, with a slightly thinner beam than most power rackets. It's a powerful racket, but not all the way to pure drive head extreme or uh, Wilson Ultra, for example. But the Hazel rackets are nice and it shows that you can create some good products also from smaller brands. Let's do a tangent of smaller brands for a while. We have the Fury. This is the Arma Pro Lite. Um, there is the Arma Pro 98, which uh, I reviewed very favorably. I wanted to and played some tournaments with for a while, but then my father wanted them, so I gave them to him. And uh, yeah, that's how it goes. The Fury rackets are, are excellent rackets. I think they've seen them been sold out a bit. Not sure what their next steps are, creating more models or, or um, what's happening when you have a small operation. It's obviously different, but excellent products that they made together with the master racket technician there. And I really like the Fury rackets. They're quite powerful, but they have a nice soft sensation and impact that I like. I think you really feel the sweet spot on these rackets and that's something I, I personally enjoy. If we look into the direction of Solinco and Technifiber, whether we have foam filled rackets with a stable, solid, softer feel, Diadem Elevate should be on the list as well. A very nice frame especially the design cosmetic of this one feels very premium. Also feels like a premium racket when they hit the ball. Nice control and uh, softer sensation and very nice uh, generally on all, all strokes. If you're out for a control racket, like the white out from Solinco, TF40 from Technofiber, Radical from Head or Wilson Blade 98. Uh, this one is very good. I also like their Nova racket. So uh, more dampened, more solid, uh, a little bit more muted, but also great rackets. Another company that likes to fill the rackets with foam is Angel. Uh, Paul Angel's racket, he used to work for Dunlop for many years. This is a K7 Lime extended one, the XL. Uh, it's not filled with foam as far as I know, uh, but it has a very nice feel with Aramid layup and uh, one of my favorite control rackets, the K7 Lime. I also used it for quite a while. They have their own operation, you have to buy them from the website. And they've been around for, for quite a while and you can get your custom specs on their custom line. So definitely check out uh, Angel. Keeping up with the theme of smaller brands, we have 10X Pro, a company out of Australia, such as Hazel, also blacked out rackets. Uh, this one is, is very, very flexible. Uh, I think the inspiration was from like a Head Pro Tour, which is a, was a very flexible control racket. This one is 98 though, called the Excalibur. They also have the X-Strike, which is a bit more power and spin, but this one is very nice and soft in the sensation when you strike the ball. I do enjoy this racket a lot. I do like to, to push a bit smaller manufacturers as well and I wish them all the, the luck and you, I mentioned quite a few here with Diadem, Hazel, Angel and so on. But this one very very soft and the, the X-Strike more power more spin definitely more power spins. It's just like they're quite different these two models they have. Maybe you've seen a Bolt racket. Uh, there are Bolt taxis, there are Bolt delivery services. Before uh, this year I have not I had not played with Bolt rackets but quite an interesting technology they have these zip strips here that kind of uh, deform and go back into shape. So they, they create this trampoline effect in the in the string bed, uh, which is felt, but not too crazy to control. And uh, also takes away lots of vibration. Obviously it's not the same control as maybe, uh, you know, a Blade 98, but it, it's, uh, it's a bit more power and uh, creates a nice sensation on impact. Just a little bit more of a, of a lively feel. I would say a Clash 98 uh, could be something similar to this Bolt. This is the 98. There's also, there's also hundreds of range rackets and so on. But uh, I like when I see new innovation and this one is very interesting innovation. I talked to the founder, Brett Bothwell on the podcast. So check that out. Uh, I was like talking to tennis enthusiasts, uh, especially if they try to come up with something new. Donate, they all still make rackets. They have some excellent newer rackets. I took this one because it's a legend. It's the Pro 1, the one that Agassi used. Uh, still has plastic on the handle, thanks to Dennis for that. Uh, so this is the limited edition model. And Donne, uh, historically and specifically now, uh, they are very, very, very foam filled. They have like, you know, six, seven layers of foam inside the rackets. And they're very arm friendly. They have the all wood, which is an extremely arm friendly racket. Very soft feeling frames generally. So for Tennis elbow guys, you know, you have a few brands that I mentioned here, whether you go for a Wilson Clash, you go for a Donay and Gel, a few brands here that, are, that really create uh, good, good comfort rackets, Pro Chemex, uh, Bolt, for example. Uh, so Donay, historically, uh, a solid brand still around, uh, focusing more on, on foam filling and uh, arm friendliness. And they have some, some good sticks, uh, quite flexible, most of them, as far as I've, I've tried. 
So, wow, that's a bunch of rackets. Did I forget any brands? I don't think so. I went through everything I have, I think, pretty much. You know, I've been a racket guy for a long time, and I'm trying to give you as much information as I can, and I want to do also other stuff on the channel. As you can see, th these are all good rackets, and there are many brands out there, and lots to choose from. The best you can do is to try and see what feels good. If you find something that feels good, stick with that, and uh, don't try to you know, test everything because there is no perfect racket and uh, you might just lose your own tennis and your own mind doing that as I have. If you want more help about tennis rackets, I have a consultation service and a racket book and course in the Tennis Nerd store. Uh, you can check that out. The link will be in the description. Thanks for watching this one. Please subscribe if you like it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.